Right, so hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning about how to use Flask and create our very own web server or backend for our website using the Flask um, framework. So what we're going to do first off is actually go ahead and create a new folder so that we can store all our website files. So I'm going to call my folder my website and then in there we're going to be storing all the different files that are going to be used by our website. Cool. So the first thing you want to have in here is actually your web server, which by naming convention, um, according to the docs is app.py. So this is going to be your main file that the that flask reads first, as soon as the server is started. Cool. So once you have your main file in there, what you want to do is you want to open this file in your favorite text editor. I'm going to open up Visual Studio code and in there, I'm just going to drag this file. So, before you actually get started with anything, we actually need to go ahead and install, um, we need to go ahead and install Flask. So go ahead and type in CMD and then you can type in pip install, um, with a capital F Flask and then double equals 1.1.1 so that we have the same version. So give it a second and then once it's given you a successful installation, you can carry on with the tutorial. Obviously I don't need to wait because it's already installed. So what you want to do first off is go in your app.py and do from flask, which is the module we just installed, import the flask um, class, which is with a capital F. Now what you want to do next is create an app variable, which is going to be the object that stores the flask class once it's um, initialized. So app equals flask. And then in there you wanted to pass in underscore underscore name. What this does is it pretty much provides the flask, the instance of the flask um, class, which is going to be an object soon. It provides it with the name of this module or the name of this file so that it can run successfully. So what you want to do next is actually go and set a route for your website. So when the user goes on a website, so I'm going to open up Chrome here just to show you a quick example. So when the user goes on a website, <clears throat> so let's say, for example, find Jesusgodino.com. That's my website being hosted on a custom web server. Obviously, I haven't coded it. So when the user is directed to a website or types in a link, the first thing that um, the first request that he or she makes is for a route with a forward slash. So this is the request that they make. So that request. So whenever the web server sees a get request for a um, forward slash roots, it just knows that this is for the home page and it needs to serve the home page or the first content to the user. Now to do so, what we want to do is actually go ahead and use app, app. So we use at, and then we do app dot root because we're creating a root. And then in brackets, we need to specify what route we're creating. So as I said, the first route the user is always redirected to by the browser or by the link they're using is forward slash. So that's the default one, which should um, technically take the user to our homepage. So what we want to do um, with this app.root is provide it with a function that it runs every time the user has reached this route. So the default route. So whenever the user types in forward slash or reaches the default route, we want to create an index function which is going to be one. And then in this index function, we're just going to return and say, hello world. Cool. So what's going on now is as soon as the user types in our link to this web server and then requests for the forward slash or the initial request for this forward slash, um, this index function is going to be run and the user will see hello world text on their screen. Now, obviously there's a lot of um, background stuff going on, which is being handled by Flask which is why we have a clean um, interface where we can just type in return hello world. If not for Flask, we would have a load of lines just to make this possible. So now you guys might say, how do we actually run our server and start and view the outcome of this? Right, so as soon as we are done with that, what we want to do is go ahead and open up CMD. So type in CMD so that we can actually start our server. And then what you want to type in there is we want to um, make sure that we're in the same folder as where this app.py file is. So CD desktop and then CD my website is the name of the directory in which my app.py um, server is, which is going to be run by Flask. Now, first off, what you want to do is set some um, environment variables, which are going to be used by Flask. So type in set Flask app and then equals that to the name of your app, which is app.py in my case. 
So I'm going to press enter so Flask knows which app to use as its web server or the main file. And then you can just type in Flask from. And then technically that should just start working. Now, as I said before, or, I, or I'm saying now, um, the Flask server runs by default on your local machine on the address 127.0.0.1 and at the port 5000. Now, if I go to Chrome really quickly, let's go to Chrome and let's type that address in. Now, instead of typing 127.0.0.1 and 5000, you can also type in. Okay, let's see why this is not loading. I think it's frozen. Okay, it got frozen for a second. So, as you see right here, when I type in that address 127.0.0.15000, the first request I'm making to my web server is the forward slash or the forward slash get request, which is why it returns hello world, which is what I've programmed it to do. Now, we could also go ahead and type in localhost 5000 and it will have the same result because technically um, typing in localhost or 127.0.0.1 is pretty much the same thing. So as you see right here, our first route is working fine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assume that we have another page on this website. So let's just rename this to homepage and then this will be our homepage. And then what we're going to do is copy this code and then paste it down here. Let's say we have an about page as well. So we're going to do forward slash about this time. And then instead of returning home page, we're going to return about just so that we know that we're on the about page. So let's save that up and go back to our browser. Now let's refresh the page and type in forward slash about. Now when I press enter, you guys may have guessed it will say about, but obviously it doesn't. Now this is not because we have an error in our code, but this is mainly because um, we haven't restarted the Flask server. Now by default, when debugging is off, which is the default function on Flask servers, so when debugging is off, the server doesn't automatically look for file changes in your Python file. We need to manually go ahead and turn off the server and then turn it on again to actually notice any changes. So this would be very jarring if you're coding and then you have to keep closing the server and starting it again. So the simple fix to this is just to enable debugging mode so that it can automatically look for changes in your Python file and update it, update it automatically. So what you want to do is go ahead and type in flask, um, not flask, set flask underscore debug and then equals that to one, which means true. So we want to make sure that debugging is on. Press enter and then type in flask run. So now, as you see right here, the debugging mode, the debug mode on our Flask server is on. So it will pretty much look for any changes that have been made to our main app.py file. So we don't need to start the server each time we make any changes. So let's refresh this. Um, it's frozen again. So we have a error. Okay, so basically, it's a common mistake that we made, which is pretty much forgetting to rename the function. Now, this function index exists two times, which is why it was giving us the error. Let's rename the function to about. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to refresh the page. Okay, refresh the page. And as you see, when we're on our default forward slash root, it shows up as home page. And if I do forward slash about it's going to show me the about page now just for the sake of this tutorial let's go ahead and add another route and let's assume that we had another page called contact so i'm going to go ahead and change this to contact and then i'm going to change the function name this time so that we don't have the same error again and then lastly we'll change return contact now just to prove that it's automatically refreshed when i refresh the page um okay what's wrong this time so obviously this is all fine. Shouldn't really give us the error. Let's just refresh. Type in. Okay. So when we press localhost 5000, I think it was just cached. That's why it gave me the error. I probably pressed the back arrow or something like that. So when I refresh, it shows me the home page when I am at the default route. When I do forward slash about, it will show me the about page. And when I do forward slash contact, it will show me the contact page. Now, obviously, I haven't had to refresh the server even once. So now we basically know how to show some information based on routes. Now, just for good practice, we're going to learn about um, how blueprints work in Flask. 
Now blueprints pretty much avoid us from having to use a single file or pretty much just this file to have all the roots and the functions in this file. So instead of doing this, we can actually use a class in Flask called blueprints and then link all of these roots in that file and then import that file in here. So it may sound confusing now, but it's going to make sense in a moment. So what you want to do is go ahead and create a new file. So press on control.n, I think it is, yes, control.n, and then press on save. Save this file as, um, let's just call it app blueprint because this is the blueprint of our app. So it's pretty much going to store all the routes and the functions that are going to be run for the different routes that we have on our website. So in here you want to do from flask import capital B blueprint. And then in here we're going to do app blueprint, uh, app blueprint equals blueprint. And then in here we need to provide the name of our blueprint that we're going to have. I'm going to call it the same. So app blueprint and then the actual name of this module. So underscore underscore name. Cool. So now that the requirements are satisfied, we can actually go ahead and do our routing in here. So instead of having to do all of our routing in here, we're going to grab all the routing that we did in this file. So I'm going to go control X, save, and then I'm going to paste it in here. Oh no, what did I do? Control X and then save it in here. Cool. So instead of actually having to do that, um, app.roots because app.roots is not defined anymore. What we're going to have to do is change that to app blueprint.root so that it uses the blueprint variable that we just created that holds the um, flask blueprint class, I mean, uh, object, and then it's able to root us there. Now, since this file is already ready, you might say, how do we actually link this app.blueprint.py app file to our uh, app? dot pi file now the answer is pretty simple we're going to be importing it because technically any pi fi py file can be imported as a custom module or an existing module so what we're going to do is make an import for the app dot app um, underscore blueprint file that we just created so we do from app blueprint import app blueprint so we're saying from this module called app.blueprint, we want to actually import app blueprint as this object right here. So what we want to do next is go ahead and register a blueprint for this app. So we do app.register, uh, app.register, and then we pass in the app blueprint variable or the class that we just imported, which is um, for coming from here. So I have an error actually. So it's not app.register, it's app.register underscore blueprint because we're registering a blueprint. And this is just a method that is available to Flask. So let's save that up, refresh. Um, I need to get this going. So refreshed and as you see, homepage works. Since the homepage works, the other pages should work as well. Let's try it about and let's try contact. Cool, so all of the pages are working fine. So that basically means that we've used a better approach and a cleaner approach of using a modular programming uh, method where we've split the routing and the running of functions into a different module and we're still able to use the functionality as before. So obviously using it this way makes it a lot more easier to manage when you have a large code base. If it's obviously a small project, you can just carry on with the first method that was shown to you. Now, instead of just returning normal text, we can actually return HTML text. So what we're going to do is actually um, return HTML attributes or HTML elements using um, this routing that we have going on right here. So instead of returning just home page, I'm going to actually create an HTML tag, so an a H1 tag, and then I'm going to send that instead of just passing in a normal text so let's go ahead and do that for the about as well so make this h1 and then close h1 so this is just normal html markup language um, where we're creating an a header element which is going to hold the text of contact so it's pretty much going to make the text bold whatever text is inside it makes it bold and then it makes it a bit larger so let's refresh and as you see right here the um 
text we were returning is no longer just a normal string, it is actually an HTML element. We can prove that by going ahead and selecting the file and then inspecting it. So if you inspect on the contact, as you see right here, it's not a normal text element. It is actually an HTML text element which says H1 and then you have the text in there. Cool. So that was it for today's tutorial guys. Hope you have learned something new through this tutorial. Um, hope I didn't overwhelm you with way too much information. Um, if you guys would like to support the channel, you can do so by either signing up as a patron using the Patreon link in the description. You can also purchase a super chat emoji or a highlighted message when this video premieres as it really helps. Um, also consider joining my Discord channel and adding up my socials for a load of fun. And guys, I will see your beautiful faces in part 2 of using Flask using Python. Peace!